of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank God. We thank God. It's a testimony for many of us. Since Jesus came into our lives, things have never been the same again. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Clap to the Lord.
He's your healer this morning. He's greater. He's awesome in power. And that's the God we came to worship. Yes, our God, we worship you. We adore you. Who is like you? He's greater. He's strong in power. If you know him, come on, go ahead and speak to him right now. Come on and speak to him because he's your healer. He's the greater God. There is none like him. There is none like him. He's awesome in power. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. We worship you and we adore you, Father, this morning. Because there is none like you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we give you honor and adoration. We worship you, Father, because you are our God. You've given us the grace to be in your house today. And we come, we come to bow our heads, to lift our hands to worship you, Lord. So we adore you. We give you glory. We give you honor and adoration. You deserve the highest praise of God. Who is like you, King of Kings? Who can be compared to you, O oh Lord? This fight is your grace, O oh Lord. This fight is you, Lord. We come to worship you and to adore you, Jesus.
that we are lifting our eyes to you, not to the mountain, because you are the maker of heaven and earth, oh dear Lord. You are the mighty God, my Father. Lord, we stand in awe of you, oh my Father. We worship you. We praise you, dear Lord. And Father, as we gather together today here, my Lord, it is your spirit who has called us from our homes. And we have come, my Father. And Lord, we want to thank you, my Lord. We want to praise you. Our congregation, I want to call upon you. 
for all those things that the Lord has done for you in this week, even this morning, even as you are standing there. I want you to take this moment and thank God for yourself, for people that you know, prayers that you prayed in the week, and the Lord has answered. Let's take this moment to give thanks to the Lord. Let's get this moment to praise the Lord. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, dear Lord, for healing. We praise you, dear Lord, for provisions, even in these difficult times, dear Lord. We praise you, my Father, for the health you have given our children, oh dear Lord. We want to thank you, Lord, for the neighbors, my Father. We want to thank you for security and protection that you've given us when we have gone out and when we have come in. Because, Lord, it is you and none but you. So we thank you and we praise you and we honor you and we give you glory, oh God. And Father, in that spirit of thanksgiving, we want to just bring our nation to you. These are very difficult times, dear Lord. There are issues of the finance bill that many of us may not understand, except that we know it seems to be making things harder for us. But Lord, our help comes from you. So Father, I want to pray for the congregation at Sitam Vika Road today, my Father. As we watch the news, as we read the messages sent to us, dear Lord, I want to pray that we will turn our eyes to you, O oh God, and we will say that our help comes from you. So, Father, we want to pray for wisdom, oh dear Lord. We want to pray for wisdom and strength and boldness to the members of parliament, to the people that we have elected to go and make such decisions for us. Oh, Lord, that we want to pray for them. We want to speak to them when we have the opportunity. But we want to say that, Lord, the hearts of men and women can only be changed by you. And therefore, Lord, we want to commit them to you, oh God. Yes, my Father, in the past we may have been, been disappointed. But Lord, we want to say that we have an appointment with you, O oh God. We make an appointment with you for this nation of Kenya, O oh God. We make an appointment about our security. We make an appointment about our economy, O oh Lord. We will make an appointment about our education system, O oh my Father. We want to make an appointment about the churches in Kenya, O oh dear Lord, even with the onslaught of what has happened in Malindi, in Kilifi, O oh God. We want to pray that, Lord God of wisdom, that those men and women who will sit down to make decisions, your Holy Spirit will speak through them, will reveal to them, dear Lord, hidden secrets. And therefore, my Father, they will make decisions that are over and above their wisdom, decisions that are over and above their experiences, because, Lord, you'll be working on them. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, on this day when men and women all over the world are gathered to worship you in the places of worship, we want to pray that, Lord, you may be in their presence, O oh God. Yes, my Father, we make an appointment with each one of us that, Lord, we do not only come to you with things, but you come to us, O oh God, and reveal yourself to us in special ways, O oh God, that as we come from these services, my Father, we have been spoken by you, all, to, uh, to by you, O oh Lord. Lord. We want to pray for the church in Kenya, my Father. We want to pray for the church in Nairobi, my Father, those men and women who have gathered. We pray that, Lord, those men and women that you've given messages to speak, they may not speak of themselves, but as your word comes out, it will come out with power, O oh God. Father, we want to pray for Sitam. We want to pray for our bishop, my Father, and the deputy bishop. We want to pray for the senior pastors, dear Lord, and their deputies. Father, we want to pray for the administrators us in the head office, and we want to pray, my Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the pastoral teams, for the uh, heads of departments, and for all of us in ministry, dear Lord, as we serve you in this church, my Father, that your light will shine through uh, us, O oh God, that men will not see a name sitam, but they will see the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want to pray for this church, uh, Sitam Thika Road. We want to bring our senior pastor and the pastoral team to you, dear Lord. We pray that, Lord, you bless them as they come in and as they go out. You bless them when they are standing and when they are sitting. Lord, you bless them when they are lying down. And you bless their families, my Father. You prosper them spiritually, physically, emotionally, oh dear Lord, and even economically, my Father, that the people will look at them and say, surely these men and women walk with the Lord. So we want to pray even for the uh, ministries, my Father, the men ministry, the women ministries, the children 
children's church, the uh, youth, all the groupings, dear Lord, we want to pray for them. And as we look at the week that is coming, my Father, we submit ourselves to you for the things that we have planned because you are the only one, dear Lord, who can bring to pass those things that we have planned. You are the only one, my Father, who can cause to happen things that we would like to happen. And Father, as we pray for ourselves, we want to remember those amongst us who are sick and congregation. I know you know people who are sick and are bereaved. I want to give you an opportunity, one minute, to just speak a prayer. Just pray for that person you know who is not well. Pray for that person you know that is bereaved. Speak to the Lord about them because we may not have all the names with us. Just speak to the Lord and let their blessings come. And Father, we want to pray for Jacqueline Wamboi Njao. Uh, a sister to Edwin Jao, who is admitted at M M Pisha Hospital. Lord, we speak your comfort upon uh, Wamboi in the name of Jesus Christ. And we pray that, Lord, you send her doctors and nurses who will favor her, dear Lord, because you'll be in her presence. We pray for healing. It comes from you. Pray that you may cause the procedures and the medication that she is given to bring healing, oh God. We also want to pray for the mom to Paul uh, Muacho uh, of Men's of Impact um, who has a heart condition. Lord, I just want to pray that you also bring healing to her, oh dear Lord. Yes, we talk about these conditions, they come to us, but we come to you and you deal with them just the way Jesus dealt with all those that he was asked to deal with when he walked the earth. And Father, on bereavements, we want to remember Consolata Wangu Ingure, um, of the prayer ministry who, are lost, who has lost her mom. We want to pray um, that Jesus would provide even for the hospital bill of 4.75 million. The Bible tells us that you own the cattle on the thousand hills, oh God. And my father, silver and gold are yours. Those resources that from the beginning you set for this uh, particular time uh, for Consolata and her relatives, dear Lord, we pray that you will call them into being from the pockets of uh, your people. And Father, we also want to pray for Bafali Mlama of Children's Ministry, who lost her dad, my father. We pray that you may comfort them, my Lord, and we pray that your fatherhood, you are embracing, the embracing and the comforting of the Holy Spirit may be with them, and that, Lord, you would provide for them. We thank you, dear Lord, because we know you've heard our prayers, because we've prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Elder. Um, you've done uh, well in making sure we do a corporate prayer. I uh, would like also to, uh, we can appreciate the praise and worship team as they go to sit down. Hasn't uh, they been used of God? Yes, they have, and we thank, we did really thank them, and they are always very kind to us. Uh, they always make songs that have, Najua uh, Kibwagizo, or the chorus, eh? Make sure that even if you don't know the other song, you can throw a wrong, you know. And I know most of us, uh, when we were growing up, we didn't have projectors, so you could only stick to the nearest uh, song book, hymn book. And uh, some of us who we don't say we are short, we are vertically challenged. Eh? We, uh, our, our siblings were tall, and uh, so I could not reach out to, the, to read the song, but I could... Uh, I could worship and throw a wrong, eh? I may not want to say what I was saying sometimes. Sometimes we can say, na hapo pengi ne sipa jui. You know, <laughs> and, and, uh, but God is faithful. He understood us. Uh, the Lord is not limited. Allow me to welcome you into this service. Thank you for making it to this service. Uh, and I just want you to just look at the person next to you. Just tell them welcome. Yes, 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 yes. Um, you, you know, I worked in the security sector, and uh, sometimes when, when the church says you look at the person next to you, because uh, in, uh, in Evidence Act, you must prove like uh, something happened using the senses. That is the sense of seeing, the sense you had, you saw with your eyes. So they will ask you, did you see with your own eyes, not your friend's eyes? Eh? Did you perceive it with your own ears? 
you know, and knows if you something to be smelt. Uh, so probably uh, because of that background, I'm telling you to look at your neighbor because if, if anything happens, you would say, did you see that person, you know, with your own eyes? In the, on a right note, the people who are here are uh, people coming to seek uh, the face of the Lord. Allow me at this uh, point to check who has worshipped us worshiped with us for the very first time, our first time visitors. I'll not ask you to come uh, here in front, but I just want you to just lift your hand wherever you are so that we can recognize you and appreciate you. Uh, our first time visitor, please lift your hand wherever you are. Yes, I can see hands all allowed. Thank you, thank you so much. Let me just request you to start. I'll not ask you to come on board so that our, our welcome team can see you, give you a brochure. So when you get uh, that brochure, you can drop it, fill the part that you are supposed to leave. Thank you, you can see we have visitors all over. And Karibu Nisana, thank you for making a conscious decision to come to this service. We will request you to fill the, the form just to help us know you better. And we will also give you a first opportunity uh, today as we exit the service to go to our holding room, our visitors lodge, uh, which is uh, located uh, behind uh, uh, this church on my left side. We will be inviting you. We'll go give you a cup of tea. I can see it's raining. So thank you for really making it uh, for, for this service. And Karibu Nisana. For those who will be, who are just coming and they'll be going back to their Asebres uh, or to their fellowships, please pass our greetings and regards. Uh, do not go and they ask you, did they give you greetings from Nairobi? Please, yes, you will not be seeming to say you got greetings from Nairobi. Uh, if your church is like my church, uh, where I come from uh, in my up country, you must, uh, for you to be spiritual, you must carry some baggage of greetings, especially from the city. So you have all our greetings and, you know, our goodwill. But if you are shopping for a church, uh, nowadays I hear people say, you know, they are surfing for a church or browsing for a church, uh, we want to, congregation, what do we tell uh, the people surfing? Because you also started surfing and you find, found yourself here. What do you want to tell them? What message of hope do you want to tell them? Well said. Yes, your search for a church has come to a blessed end. Uh, at this juncture, allow me to invite uh, the children just to stand up wherever you are. Uh, you are privileged in this church. Uh, we, it's quite a diverse church, a cosmopolitan church. Children, you are blessed. You know, when I was growing up children, I used to think people from other, other counties have a different color from my county. I came from a county background, eh? and we were not... We were not so multicultural. So I used to think uh, when you were singing this song, Jesus loves the little children, the red brown. Yes, I used to think some of the children maybe from uh, uh, where? Busia County, Al Yellow, uh, <laughs> and Kware County, like Elder here, El, I'll not say Elder who, you know, Al Green, but. Uh, but God is great. We have people who, th that shows, the colors shows diversity. So let's, let me help you sing that Sunday school song. Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the... Wonderful, well sung, well sung. Yes, God has many diverse people and he loves them all. Let me just pray for you as you go to the Sunday school. God, we thank you for these children you've given unto us. We are ever grateful that you've given us people we can mentor to know you. We pray that you help us as parents to, to, 
parent them in the ways of God. And we pray for our children. God, protect them as they go to the Sunday school. Speak to them. May the Lord is not limited to visiting children. The Lord loves all the children. As we've sung from whatever background they come from, Jesus loves them. We pray that you may continue helping them to know that you love them more than they can think or imagine. For it is in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Thank you, children. Uh, you can go to your classes with a smile because Jesus loves you. At this point, allow me to invite uh, the media team to roll up the announcement. Uh, welcome, media team. Welcome to Sitam Thicker Road, where Christ is the answer. We are glad that you came. Please turn to your neighbor on your left and on your right. Smile and tell them Karibu Church. Wewe ni wamana. Wow, thank you for obeying. Now, just a reminder of our theme for the year. Our theme remains in his presence, derived from John 15, verse 5. If you abide in me, you will bear much fruits. The first ministry wishes to notify the church that we shall not have baby dedication in this month of June. We shall, however, resume in the month of July. The First Ministry also wishes to notify the congregation that the joint weddings will take place on Saturday the 26th of August 2023 and not the 22nd of July as earlier communicated. Those who would like to be part of the same to sign up at the information desk. Remember that you must have gone through the Marriage Blessing Class PMCC to qualify. The Golden Ages Ministry invites all 50 years and above to their bi-monthly fellowship on Sunday, the 18th of June, 2023, at 2 p.m. at the Park Chapel. The speakers will be Dr. Joseph M. Irungu and Mrs. Penina Irungu. The topic will be on mental health related to Golden Ages. All Golden Ages are invited. Please note that today is Giving Sunday. We therefore are appealing for the following donations. Dry foodstuffs, new innerwear for young boys and girls aged between 2 to 19 years, sanitary towels, stationery, beddings, and large diaper sizes for children aged 2 years and above. Remember, no act of kindness, no matter how small, is ever wasted. To all men of impact at Sitam Thikarot, we invite you for a joint men's sports day with Sitam Clay City, Sitam Kiambu Road, and Sitam Ruiru. The sports day happen on the 17th of June from 8 a.m. to noon, right here at Sitam Thikarot. Come for a time of fun and fellowship. Our speaker of the day will be Reverend Eli Ochien, the senior pastor Sitam Clay City, to Patane Sports Day. Ladies, 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 you are invited to the WA Monthly Fellowship on the 17th of June at 9 a.m. right here at Sitam Thikarod. Come, let's fellowship and experience love and care. The topic is ministry to ladies by ladies. Hashtag heart to heart talk. And the speaker will be Rose Salwa. You can pay your tithes and offering through our M-Pesa pay bill number 933-944. Account name, tithe or offering. The PDQ machine is also available at the information desk for swiping. Thank you for paying attention to today's notices. Please remember to follow us on all of our social media platforms at... Sitam Thikarol. That is Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube. Natafadali, like and subscribe. I am Don Walters, and you are blessed. Thank you. Uh, let's appreciate media team. They are doing well. Uh. 
you, you know, media team play a very great role. Uh, when they gave me this mic today, I was given a briefing that this is how you put it on. Uh, because they realize I'm a village boy. In my village, you must tap the microphone and cough just to confirm that it is working. So uh, media team, you have helped us a great deal. Let us appreciate them. Eh? Uh, <clears throat> At this juncture, we would like to get to the period of uh, uh, giving, and it is a joy to give, isn't it? Eh? God gave his only son. So we want to invite uh, our ushers to wait on us for our tithes and offering, as I also invite uh, the worship team to just to come and uh, uh, give us a number, even as we continue uh, to worship you. And let's appreciate our worship team as they do come, you know, that um, you are leading us in worship, and I know also Ashas will also pass by and bring, give the basket to you. So you are doing great, you know, you are doing it double, and may the Lord give you a double uh, blessing. So karibu sana.
Thank you, worship team. Church, would you want to appreciate these ministers in a better way? Amen. Good morning. And praise the Lord. Some of you are quiet. I don't know whether we are interceding. When I said praise the Lord, I saw some people not speaking. Maybe if you are seated next to a neighbor or next to your spouse and you disagreed when you are coming to church. The Bible says that in the presence of the Lord there is what? Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on, do you want to wave at me wherever you are? We bless the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming into the house of the Lord this morning. Uh, we prayed that you come. Do you know, by the way, if you fail to come to church, our work is done as pastors. Lord have mercy. But we... Oh, prayer for the offering. Let me pray for the offering. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, it's such an honor and a blessing for us to come into your presence, to over-worship through our lips, and also to over-worship through our giving. I pray that, Lord, you bless every giver, every person who has extended their hand to give, we pray, Lord, for multiplication. And those who did not have something to give, we pray that you remember them also. Those who did not give for lack of understanding why we give offering in church, we pray that the Holy Spirit will teach them the essence of giving. And as a church, Lord, we pray that the finances that have been brought our way we will be good stewards of the monies that you have given us. And that, Lord, these monies will be used for the expansion of the kingdom. We thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen, Amen, Amen. amen. Would you want to appreciate uh, Brother Deuri for leading us so well? <laughs> amen, Amen. I was saying that we pray that you, you pray that you come to church and we bless the Lord that you are here. And um, I just want to remind us, let's take note of the announcements. This coming weekend, the men are meeting together with the men from Clay City and Kiambu Road and Sitam Ruiru. Then we have our sisters meeting. And uh, if you are not in any of those uh, ministries, those fellowships, you are missing a lot. And let me say this, uh, brothers and sisters, that it is very possible to get lost here because we are many in number. So you come and find after the service, once we share the benediction, you have no connection with the church after that. The only time you get to meet or talk to someone is when the pastor says, talk to your neighbor. It's never supposed to be that way. Make sure that you are somewhere. You are in a ministry. You are in a fellowship. When you join the men of impact, they will introduce you to the groups. When you join the women ministry, they will introduce you to the groups. And that is where life is happening. Church was not meant for Sunday only. Where you come and we share the word and you are blessed. And you go home. You need to have at least somebody you can connect with. Somebody you can call and say, stand with me in this. Pray with me in this. Somebody you can invite when you have things you are celebrating. That is how church is meant to be. Praise the Lord. Because you know, if you are looking for ministry, I would want to tell you that it is very hard for me and the pastoral team to minister to every one of you. But when you are in a small group, that's where ministry happens. Yeah, some of you we meet here at TRM, and you are looking at me, Pastor, you are not recognize me. And when you see I'm passing by, that's when you say hi, Pastor. And truth be told, 
I'm seeing you for the very first time. So don't get lost in the bigness of the church. Find yourself somewhere in ministry. Are we together? I am here to invite the speaker. And uh, we are blessed to have uh, our brother. He told me it is not you, it is Yao. And said if it is difficult, I can call it, I can call him Yawa. Luo's identify with that. And we are blessed to have him with us in our midst today. And uh, just to make a brief introduction, but before he comes, I will ask Brother Ezekiel Jaco to come and, and, and say hi to the congregation. Because it is through our brother Ezekiel that we, we got Dr. Pabi to come and speak to us. Um, so who is Dr. Pabi in a, in a nutshell because I know he will do the rest of the introduction. I actually understand he's commonly known as YP. We have a ministry here we call YP. They're called the Young Professionals. And uh, he is a trainer and a coach for uh, scores of emerging and established leaders around the world. And he is also the founder and global CEO of an international human development NGO called the HUD Group with operations in 25 countries. And he also established uh, a ministry called Quiva in 2020. And this is a cutting edge global missions uh, organization based in Accra, Ghana. But he is uh, serving the group in leadership uh, development, cross cultural training and sending. Uh, and also is a life coach, as I said, is involved heavily with the international students ministry and also uh, involved in support raising for missionaries in all these programs. And for those who have been with us for some time, in 2019, during our springboard uh, uh, revival meetings at Vary Road, he was one of the uh, key speakers, and we are glad that he is with us today. And before he comes, I want to invite Brother Ezekiel to come and say hi to the congregation, and then we will have uh, Dr. Pabi speaking to us in spreading the aroma of his presence in the world or in the nations. Thank you. Church, good morning. Praise the Lord. My name is Ezekiel Jaco. I'm a Kenyan, but um, I got to know Dr. Yao Pabi in 2017 or thereabout. I was introduced to him, or rather, uh, he was introduced to me by two gentlemen, one Sam Gugi, who, who, who was at that time the national coordinator of Kairos in Kenya, is now doing his PhD in the UK, and a gentleman from Nigeria by the name of Mark Kolo, is now involved with Activate, uh, it's a ministry that is actually working with the missionaries. Now, uh, how did I get to know him? I applied for my visa to go to Canada for five days. A church in Canada invited me for five days because they had been supporting me since, 20, uh, since 2010. And so when I applied for my visa for five days, I was given 10 years work visa instead. And um, the church was not very amused that I got that visa because they thought Africans, they like exaggerating things. So maybe Ezekiel applied for this visa without us knowing, but it was the working of the Lord. So when Dr. Pabi and the, and the whole of Jerusalem, sorry, the whole of ISMC, International Student Ministries Canada, heard about that miracle, they invited me to go and serve with them. So I served in Canada as a missionary and serving as the city director of Ottawa team of International Student Ministries Canada. That is how Reverend Kuchio came to know Dr. Pebby, 
because he came for our first partner's breakfast. And Reverend Kuchio met him there, Bishop Padoyo met him there, and they invited him for the springboard in 2019. Now, my roots with Sitam. Sitam has been um, uh, everything to me. First, I went through PAC when it was still PSCC. After I graduated, I worked with Bible Society. And then I went for further studies in Singapore. When I went for further studies in Singapore, Bishop Adoyo, that time he was still called senior pastor only, came to Singapore for a short course, and I introduced him to my professors in Singapore, and I introduced him to my pastor in Singapore, and that is how the connections with the East Timor began. He came to know another pastor in Singapore, and they started to work together, and they have been sending missionaries, or you have been sending missionaries to East Timor. And one of the missionaries there right now, Lucy Kega, was my student. And I also gave orientation to Pastor Paul uh, and his wife, and another couple, uh, Elder Odera and his wife, when they were going as missionaries out of Kenya. Okay? The Lord has been gracious to us. Um, actually, my, if you want to know my calling, you can call it the Andrew calling. Andrew introduced his brother, Peter, to Jesus, and the rest is history. Andrew is not as known as Peter. I introduced Sitam to Singapore, and the rest is history. <laughs> I even introduced your bishop, your current bishop, to Singapore. He did his master's at the school where I was. I gave him orientation when he was in Singapore, and I introduced him to the pastor that they have been working very closely with, and the rest is history. <laughs> and so on and so forth. But Dr. Yao is here. He came to help us launch the Pan-African International Students. Our heart is for the international students. So we have initiated a Pan-African International Students. We leave it there. We don't call it ministry because we are reaching to international students, whether Christian or not Christian. And we have a two-purpose fold. We reach out to the international students who come from other countries to study in our own, uh, in our own city in the, and in our own country. So we call that centripetal. Those who come, we reach out to them. Uh, it is not my time to explain. But we have another arm of international students, and you could be knowing some of the people. Uh, and you could be having some of your children who are studying outside. Now, we give those orientation, cross-cultural orientation and training, so that when they go, they don't leave Kenya as Christians, but when they reach there, they forsake their faith. So we help them to remain Christians when they go for the further studies outside there, especially Canada, US, UK, Germany, Australia, and so on and so forth. So please, if you have or you know someone who is an international student or who wants to go out as an international student or as a student from Kenya to another part of, the, of Kenya or of the world, we will be able to hook up together, give them orientation, help them. Even parents, when they are sending their children out there, they don't know what to expect. In fact, some of them, they remain crying. We don't know how our children will be. And some of the children, when they get there, they, beca they become gay. So we help them not to become anything else than Christian. Thank you so much, Paul, for inviting me. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank, you. thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. And we ask that we put our hands together as we bring uh, Dr. Pabi to come and speak to us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are at your feet to hear your word. Open our minds and give us understanding of what the Holy Spirit is saying. 
because as the scripture reminds us until the whole world hears and as lord your servant speaks give him clarity of mind and speech and lord may the word come down with power to the glory and honor of your name in jesus name we pray Praise the Lord. Can we do it better for pastor? Come on. Come on. I was told I was coming to a vibrant church. So show me you are vibrant. You know the scripture that says many are called, few are chosen. In some churches I go to around the world, that scripture reads many are cold, few are frozen. So let that not scripture be your portion. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Pastor and, and, and First Lady, for inviting me, elders. And uh, it's a privilege to be here. I now think I am Kenyan. You know, even this year, this is my second time, and I'll be back in November. I think you should give me a citizenship. If you have connections with Ruto, let me know. Okay, please. All right, I bring you greetings. Uh, today we're talking about shaped to spread his aroma to the nations in line with your theme in his presence. And I know you've been talking about being the aroma of Christ, the smell of Christ in our neighborhoods, in our schools, in our villages, in our offices, everywhere and into the nations. I want to bring you greetings from my family. Can you, can you show them the next slide? I think that's, ah, that's my family. I, I needed to bring you this update because when I came in 2019, I think we had only five children. Yeah, so I have to give you this update. Yeah, we have, what's your problem? <laughs> we, we are only obeying Jesus. We take everything in the Bible very seriously, everything. You know, anyway, so that's my wife, Agnele, and, uh, and our serving children. And we've been serving between Ghana and Canada, so sometimes I say we are from Ghana, you know. And uh, when, in, when I, whenever I introduce myself in Africa and I say I have seven children, they ask, with the same woman? <laughs> so when I'm introducing myself in Africa and I say I have seven children, I have to say, well, I bring you greetings from my one wife. But then when I'm introducing myself in Canada, I have to also say I bring greetings from my one wife, who is a woman. Because some people's wives are not women. But by the time I go to Australia, like I did in March, I have to say I have one wife who is a woman, who has always been a woman. Because some people were not women and they became women. What is wrong with you people? Anyway, it is great to be in the house of the Lord. And this, this is my first missionary team. All right. Now, other update I want to give you is this. If you can go to the next slide. All right. Since 20, I came to speak in 2019. Since 2018, 2019, Africa has been the continent with the most Christians in the world. Hallelujah. Yes, it's good to clap to that. It is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. You know. And so we, uh, Sam Ngugi and I put a, this book together last year. We launched the Bishop Oginde. It was there, and no, Bishop uh, Callisto actually launched it uh, at Sitam Valley Road last year. And we have been sharing the story that Africa is the most Christian continent in the world today. But what does that mean? What does that mean in spreading his aroma to the nations? Uh, I think we only have about 10 copies here. We had a problem with printing here in Kenya. So we have only like 10 copies. So quickly grab it after the service. Next slide. So that's uh, Stephen Bogo introducing the book. I want to make it very clear that it's not about a book. It's about a movement. If you can show them the next slide, maybe they'll understand what I'm talking about. You're not, the top there is 1910. Now, you may not see from where you are. Maybe we can WhatsApp it to you. But every square you see there is one million Christians. And in 1910, if you look at the, the part, the small part there at the bottom right, all right, around 5 o'clock, if you like, on the top graph, the brownish part there, is Africa. We were only 9 million Christians in sub-Saharan Africa. Thank you. Oh, this media team is amazing. Let's give it up for them. Wow. They are working miracles. All right. So you look at the brown part, the 9 million Christians in 1910. In 1910, in fact, in 1910, there were four Muslims to one Christian in Africa. And some people said, let's leave Africa alone. Islam will take over the continent. In 1910, there was a big conference in Edinburgh, in England, 
All these big men and women, missionaries from around the world met to talk about world evangelization in our lifetime. Not a single African was invited. Not a single African missionary. 1910. And a hundred years later, see what the Lord has done. Can you see what the Lord... Can you show them the picture? Because now, uh, and by 2010, there were over 570 million, 516 according to this graph, million Christians, and now we are over 670 million in 2023. It is the doing of the Lord, and it is wonderful in our eyes. The question is, so what? We are many, but what is the quality? Of the Christians. Do we see it on the street? Do we see it in our schools? Will this be just a passing moment? That is the question. Or will this be a memorable movement from Africa to the nations of the world? There's a professor of missiology called Andrew Walls. He just died last year, I think. Before Andrew Walls died, he said, global Christianity for the next 200 years will be shaped by what happens in the heads and the hearts of African Christians. What kind of Christianity will we give the world? And that is why I'm here to talk about Shaved for spreading his aroma among the nations. Next slide. So that's the topic for today. Next slide. Oh yeah, let me show you this graph before I go into the rest of the sermon. You see, <laughs> this is part of why Sam and I wrote the book. We were so angry when we saw this graph. Now you look at 1902. You see, the pink is Europe. The reddish, deeper pink is North America. If you look at 1902, almost 18 to 90% of missionaries came from Europe and North America. Have you seen that? But if you look at it, that is reducing. And you get to by 2050, 79%, almost 80% of missionaries who come from Latin America, Asia, and Africa. In fact, why we got so upset is that how come Africa's number of missionaries has hardly changed from 1902 to 2050? How come the continent with the most Christians in the world is only giving about 10% of missionaries? Is this a problem? <laughs> you see? Because, in fact, we are the most Christian continent in the world right now, but by 2050, there will be more Christians in Africa than the next two continents, which is uh, Latin America and Europe combined. Did you hear me? We'll have more Christians than Latin America and Europe combined, the second and third. So how come we are pil Where are the Christians? Where are the missionaries? So there are two problems. There are two ways to look at it. Either this graph is wrong or our kind of Christianity is wrong. Or, don't you think so? My, my hope is that this graph is wrong. Because part of why this is wrong is that they are measuring mini, uh, missionaries according to how many people are gathering money and saying, send us to Europe or send us to East Timor. But I believe that in this age, most missionaries God will send from Kenya will not go as professional missionaries or vocational missionaries. They'll go because they are going, as, they are, they are going to work with the UN. They are going to work as internationals. They are going to study somewhere. Do you know? Because that is what Matthew 28 says. Matthew 28 does not say, go. Matthew 28 actually means, as you go, as you go, make disciples. The imperative there is make disciples. But as you go, as you go and study, as you go on UN peacekeeping, as you go and become an economic migrant, as you go, make disciples of all nations. Hallelujah. Next slide. So how are we going to be able to do this? How, are we going, how is God shaping us to spread his aroma to the nations? Next God wants to fill the whole earth with his glory. That is what mission is about. It's not about evangelism. It's a small part of missions. <laughs> God wants to fill the whole earth with his glory. In fact, if you would click again in, in the book of Habakkuk, it says, for as the waters fill the sea, the earth will be filled with awareness of the glory of God. God wants the earth to be so full of his glory like Mombasa, the sea in Mombasa is filled with water. So God is on a threefold mission. Number one, he stores himself to bring himself glory. All nations 
shall praise your name. God wants glory from all nations. And it's not just the 195 or 200 countries. It's every nation, every people group, the Luo, the Luya, the Kikuyu, every people group God wants. And that is why you see in the book of Revelation chapter 5, you see Revelation chapter 7, you see that all the nations, all the nations are bringing their worship to God from every tribe and every nation and every tongue. God is like, yes! God wants glory. That's why Satan exists. That's why we preach. That's why we live the way we are being told every Sunday to live. Because God wants glory. Number two, God has a mission towards all creation. To bring creation a blessing. And number three, against evil. To vanquish evil and establish his kingdom. Let me give you an example of this. Maybe you're wondering, ah, is, this guy, is this from this guy's head? Let me give you an example of this from the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, what? Hallowed be your name. God wants glory. Hallowed be your name. And then we say what? Your kingdom come. He wants to establish his kingdom. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Right? God is on a mission to bring himself glory from the thanksgiving, the worship, the obedience of all nations. But number two, towards people, to bring people a blessing, to bring creation a blessing. What do we continue to pray? Give us this day our daily bread. And then we say what? And forgive us our trespasses. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, blessed is the one whose sins are forgiven. You don't know. You don't know what a blessing is when your sins are forgiven. That's why we preach the gospel, that the world may know that somebody died for your sins, that you may be free from your shame and your guilt and your fear. There are many blessings. Yes, shoe. Yes, food yes but the greatest blessing of all is salvation that's why god called abraham and said i'm going to bless you so that you are a blessing to the nations so forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and then he says was and lead us not into temptation once upon a time in america i saw a sticker you know the stickers they put on car cars the bumper stickers the sticker said and lead us not into temptation we will find it ourselves. <laughs> and some of you are very good in finding temptation. <laughs> but, so, but, but that's the van vanquishing evil, right? Lead us not to temptation. Deliver us from the evil one. Right? Vanquishing evil. And then it goes back to the beginning. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Listen, that is the mission of God. To bring himself glory, to bring blessing to creation, to vanquish evil and establish his kingdom. Let me give you another example from the Psalms. Let's go to the next slide. May God be gracious to us and bless us. And make his face shine on us. So that your ways may be known where? On earth. Your salvation among only Kenyans. Only Kikuyus. Only Luas. All nations. May the peoples praise you, God. May who praise you? May all the peoples praise you. We could go through this entire psalm and you see the threefold mission of God. May the nations be glad and sing for joy. Right? Because you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. God wants glory. May the peoples praise you, God. May who praise you? May all the peoples praise you. God is blessing. Look, the land yields its harvest. God our God blesses us. May God bless us still. So that what? All the ends of the earth. This is the mission of God. What has it got to do with our theme in his presence? Let's just skip this, this part. Let's just go to the next slide. So I was showing you examples from the, the purple. Will, will be examples of, you know, anyway. So God's intent is this. Listen to this. This is the key for this sermon. God's intent to bring himself glory, to bring creation a blessing, to vanquish evil and establish his kingdom. How is God intending to... Con to convey his mission. No, can go back, go back, go back one. I want to. God's intent is that we have an inner intimacy with him. You see? An inner intimacy that impacts us, that shapes us inside and outside. And then that overflows in outward influence on the world for his glory. Do, do you get it? And, and, and this is so important because many of us are in a hurry to impact the world. 
and we will fail like our politicians do because you cannot change a society when you yourself are not changed. It takes deeply transformed people to deeply transform society. So God's intent is that in his presence, in the, intimacy of, in the intimacy of his presence, you will be transformed. You will be touched. You will be changed. And that when he has impacted you that way, it will overflow into you influencing the world for his glory. Hallelujah. So let's go to our main text in John 15. So Jesus is speaking and he says, I am the true vine. And the father is the gardener. You know this verse already because you've been looking at John 15 5 the whole year. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Do you see the intimacy? <laughs> if you are not in him, you are not intimate. Intimate is into me, into you. <laughs> he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Why is the branch not bearing fruit? Every branch that does not bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean by the, because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me. Do you see the intimacy? Remain in me as I also remain in you. <laughs> it's literally intercourse. That is how intimate it is. Remain in me, I in you. How is your intimacy with the Lord? Because what? No branch can bear fruit by itself. And when we say bearing fruit, it's not only in terms of influencing the world. It begins actually by impacting your life. The fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. You can't bear fruit unless you remain in me. There's five, he says, I'm the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, if we have this intimacy, you will make impact. If you have this intimacy, I will impact you. You will influence the world. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. What is nothing in Swahili? Pardon? Buri. Bure. You can do bure. <laughs> okay. All right. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. But if you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish. And it will be, do you know why if you remain in him and his words remain in you, you can ask whatever I wish that it will be done? Because you are so intimate with the Lord. The only thing you desire is what he desires. <laughs> you know, you are so intimate, you are so intimate with him. What you want is what he wants. You cry when God cries. You rejoice when God rejoices. This is to my father's glory. Have you seen we're going back to glory? What is to God's glory? That you bear much fruit. How is your fruit bearing? Showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the father has loved me. See the intimacy. As the father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. How do you remain in his love? If you keep my commandments, you remain in my love. Just as I have kept my father's commands and remain in his love intimacy changing the world begins with intimacy changing the world out there begins with changing the world inside here God's intent and inner intimacy that impacts us that shapes us in and out overflowing in an outward influence on the world for his glory next slide the problem is many of us are trying to impact the world without first deeply being transformed by Jesus and I've told you only deeply transformed people can deeply transform the world next slide you know mission as we know it many of us think mission is oh let's go let's go to East Timor let's go to Namibia let's that's not the essence of mission that's not even how mission starts like Chris Wright says, God's mission first involves God's people living in God's way in the sight of the nations. Listen, if we are not living God's way, we have no business going anywhere to tell anything. You have no news. You have no news if your life is no news. In fact, there was a place I went to somewhere and I told some people, I said, don't go anywhere as missionaries. You, you, don't go. Because you will go, only go and spread gems. 
Yes, because they go and they, they spread all kinds of things that they are, right? We must first be the people of God. In fact, right, Ramachandra, I love what he said with Pesket. He said, mission is not primarily about going. No, it's mission primarily about doing anything. Mission is about being. It is about being a distinctive kind of people, a countercultural community among the nations. Are the nations in Nairobi smelling sitam? Are they smelling that you people smell nice? Hmm. Ah, you must go to sitam. Ah. Hmm. That is the beginning of mission. That is the beginning of mission. I remember now these days. Excuse me. These days when I when I'm introduced, they don't even say I'm a medical doctor anymore. Nobody remembers. But once a doctor, always a doctor. I tell people, now I work on the software, not the hardware. But I remember one day in the military hospital where I was working, there was a child that needed blood urgently. And we have all these wardens and stuff that take, go to the lab and get blood. But I was so much desperate for this child's life, I started running to the lab in my white coat and everything myself. The child's mother started chasing me. And you know what she said? She said, doctor, doctor, I can tell you're a believer. I can tell you're a believer. You see, Jesus said we are the light of the world. He didn't say you are the sound of the world. Eh? Many of us, we are just, this, we are just noise, noise. How do we know you're a Christian? Susa, susa, give me my bow tie. What bow tie? Let your light shine. Yeah. Hallelujah. Be a sweet smelling aroma to the nations. Let's, let's, let's finish this. All right. So our lives must be transformed. And you know, I've been reading the book of Malachi. And it occurred to me that, you know, this whole idea is not just a New Testament thing. God actually called Israel to be a countercultural community. A distinctive kind of people. As mission. And they failed woefully. In fact, Malachi prophesied in Nehemiah's day. At that time, the, the, the pastors were corrupt, the politicians were worse, compromising leaders, and they had this false sense of security. Oh, we are God's people, we are God's people, you know, we are born again. We are... Do you know that Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament? For 400 years, God did not speak. 400 years. Between, when you turn your Bible, oh, Malachi, oh, Matthew, that turn is 400 years. And to God began to speak through John the Baptist. But I want us to quickly read something what God said and how it's related to mission. The word of the Lord to Israel through Malachi. Look at the intimacy again. God desires that intimacy. Some of you say, oh, Jesus loved us. In, is, is, love is New Testament. God, Old Testament, God is not love. Look at, this is Old Testament. He said, I have loved you. Oh, I have loved you. God is calling for your intimacy. You know, many of us, we want to be busy doing working for God. I, I'm like that. I like to work. You can see my personality. But listen, God is looking for... God is not looking for loving workers. He's looking for working lovers. Mm. There's a difference between a loving worker and a working lover. He's looking for lovers. I have loved you, he says the Lord. But you ask, how have you loved us? He says, was not Esau Jacob's brother? Yet I love Jacob, but Esau I hated. Why well, Esau will not come for intimacy with God. In fact, Esau is the one who sold his birthright. What God had deemed for him. And I have turned his whole country into a wasteland. This reminds me of John 15 when he says, if you don't remain in me, I'll throw you away. You will waste like a branch. You will dry up and you'll be thrown into the fire. He left his inheritance into the desert jackals. Edom, which is another name for Esau. Though we have been crushed, we will rebuild the ruins, they say. But this is what the Lord Almighty says. They may build, but I will demolish. Hey, listen. If God be for you, who can be against you? But if God be against you, who can be for you? <laughs> he says they may build it, I will demolish. They will be called a wicked land, a people always under the wrath of the Lord. You will see it with your eyes and say, great is the Lord, even beyond the borders of Israel. Throughout the scriptures, I can tell you, God is wanting glory beyond Israel, beyond the church, all the world. Let's continue. A son honors his father. You see how they were behaving? And his slave is master. If I have a father, where is the honor due me? 
if I am a master, where is the respect due me, says the Lord. It is you, priests, who show contempt for my name. But you ask, how have we shown contempt for your name? By offering defiled food on my altar. But you ask, how have we defiled you? Oh, we haven't done anything wrong. By saying that the Lord's table is contemptible. When you offer blind animals for sacrifice, is that not wrong? When you sacrifice labor, deceased animals, is that not wrong? Try and give it to the governor of your county. Will he be pleased with you? The Nairobi MC, MC, will he accept you? Says the Lord Almighty. And then look at what he says. Now plead with God to be gracious to us. May the Lord be gracious to us and bless us. With such offerings from your hands, will he accept you? Oh, that one of you will shut the temple doors. You don't ever want that. That God will say, uh-uh, it's another Sunday. They are coming to church. Oh, no. Yeah. They are coming to church again. Because they are, they are taking bribes on Friday, Sunday they are in church. You, where were you last night? Where were you last night? Where were you last night? And then we come again, God is like, they are coming, they're coming to sing, they are coming to dance, they are coming to disturb me. He says, shut the temple doors so that you will not light useless fires. Jesus, useless fires. He says a similar thing in Isaiah chapter 1, you read it, you will cry. He said, what is this trumpery of my court? Coming with songs, coming with, I love you, Lord. Yeah. He says, I will accept no offerings from your hands. My name, you see, that's what he wants. My name will be great among the nations. From where the sun rises from the east to where it sets in the west. In every place, listen, that's the aroma. In every place, incense and pure offerings will be brought to me. Because my name will be great among the nations. Kenya, you know that he wants your life as a living sacrifice, as an offering to him. No amount of money in your life. You know that in the book of Revelation, we are told that our prayers are like incense that rise to him. It must happen here first. And then it can go into the nations. For I am a great king. We serve a great king. And he wants his greatness to be known among all the nations. Hallelujah. So let's round up. Let's round up. Next slide. So how is God shaping us? How does God want to shape us? Shaping our heads, our minds, our thinking, our hearts, our emotions, our affections, our hands. In the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, he says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the view of God's mercy, to do what? Offer your bodies. Your bodies. I like this. It's very clear. Because some of you, you are so spiritual, you, you want to... Some people, they, they, they don't even want to greet you in, in English or Swahili. They meet you as... It's like they are spirit. Hey! I remember, you know... <laughs> I do, some, I do some sex seminars for young people. And because I'm a doctor, I, there's nothing I can't talk about, right? Uh, and so one day I went somewhere to, to speak to a group of young people. And I said, and when I go to place, I can tell those who are spiritual. Like they, they walk around like Holy Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can't greet them. So I said, you know what? One of the first things I say to shock them is that sex is good. And they're all like, <laughs> Of course it's good. God made it. God made all these things. And he said it's good. All right, so I go, how many of you know that you see people raising their hand and they forget that they are not supposed to know everyone, you know, it's like, <laughs> you know. But there was one guy who kept his hand up. I, I will never forget. And I was surprised because he was one of the spirit, spiritus guys. I was like, eh, spiritus guy. So I went to him and I said, sex is great. How do you know? This boy gets up squares his shoulders and clears his throat and says <clears throat> by revelation <laughs> hey <laughs> i like this scripture because some of you say yeah i've given my life to jesus oh, no. no this this scripture makes it very clear is your body your body you can't tell me I've given my life to Jesus, but my, my body I've given to the rich man in Nairobi. Your body. He says, your body. Offer your body as a living sacrifice. 
holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. Don't let the, words, the world squeeze you into its mold, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let God shape you. And I love the song you were singing this morning. Uh, it says, mold me, mold me, shape me. It says, let me look like you so that the world will see you, right? I love it. It was a great choice of song. Mold me, shape me. God wants to shape you. He wants to shape me. Why does he want to shape me? Because he wants to shape me and you back into his image, which was the original thing he did. That is why God asked the disciples, asked Adam and Eve to spread and fill the earth. Because they looked like him. Wherever they went, they spread his glory. That, that was the essence. Because they looked like him. And that is the problem. By Genesis 3, man had sinned and fallen short of God's glory, right? So that's why the whole thing about discipleship is about formation. It's about formation. God forming us back into that image. Why do you think Jesus said we will make disciples? Because so that we go back to that image. That's why you need to be in his presence. Because you become like the people you spend most time with. You spend time with people who say, fuck man, shit man. You start saying it. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. In his presence. He molds us. He shapes us. Look, that's, discipleship is all about formation. In fact, in, I, I served in, a, as a, in, a, in, a, in the United Nations for a year in Cote d'Ivoire. In French, in French, when they're saying training, they actually said formation. Formation. Look, the person who's training you is forming you. That's why you should be careful who's training you go for. Because they're forming you. It's all about formation. Listen, God formed us. Right? And then sin deformed us. The world is trying to conform us. But Jesus Christ came to reform us. And every day, his word informs us. And by his spirit, transforms us. So, hallelujah. So that we can get back to the original image. And so in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, Paul says, we all with unveiled faces, reflecting the Lord's glory in his presence, reflect his glory. We are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory. So we are looking more and more like Christ, more and more like Christ in his presence, in his presence, more and more like him, more and more like him, until the Bible says, when we shall see him, we shall be like him. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. God is shaping you. May he receive all the glory. Allow him to shape you. Because when he transforms you, see, then you can test and know what God's will is. Many of us, you want the pastor to tell you what God's will is. Because you will not pay the price and stay in the presence. And no, listen, when God sent us to Canada as missionaries, even pastors did not understand. But in the presence of God, he has spoken to us. After... 13 or so years in Canada, God says, go back to Africa. Because I want to shape Africa. I want to send Africa to the nations. Go back and help to prepare my people to go. That's why I'm here. But we're coming back to Africa and people say, ha, huh? what's wrong with you? Why are you coming back? We, we want to run away. You are coming. <laughs> you, have, you seen, have you seen that thing? And I said, ah, when we were going, you say, hey. When we are coming to you, say, hey. So what should we do? All right, of that you've got to be in his presence. Then you, you, then you can test and approve what his will is. We march to the beat of the heavenly drama. We don't march according to Ruto's beat. We don't march according to the United Nations beat. We march according to the beat of the heavenly drama. If everybody is dancing this way and the heavenly father is playing this way, this is the way we're going to dance. And so let him shape you. Then you will test and approve what his will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. How many of you want God to shape you? To shape my mind. Shape my body. Shape my will. Let me conform. Not to the world. But to your image. But to your stature. In your presence. What else does he want to shape? I need to bring this to an end. Otherwise you guys will invite me back. Next slide. Oh, no. There's something before that. You see, I know my stuff. Ezekiel, oh, Jacko, Ezekiel, Jacko is talking to us. Jesus, God is saying, I will take you out of the nations. I will gather you from all the countries and bring you back into your own land. 
Listen to what he'll do for you. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. How many of us need some cleaning? Oh, by the way, cleaning and cleansing always comes before prosperity. You want Kenya to prosper, but will not repent of corruption. We are not going to prosper now. Yes. Cleansing. Cleansing. It says, I will sprinkle cl clean water on you and you'll be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. The things you are putting before me. The things you are prioritizing beside me. I will give you a new heart. Oh, in his presence, he can give you a cardiac transplant. Ah, I love that scripture. Do you know that the God who made the world out of nothing, the expression is ex nihilo, out of nothing, he can create in you a clean heart. No matter how rotten your heart is, that's the word, creating me a clean heart. The word is bara, out of nothing. I will give you a new heart. How many need a new heart? Let me tell you something. You can say you don't need a new heart. Uh, okay. You know, the blood of Jesus, it doesn't cleanse excuses. It only cleanses confessions of sin. If you say you're okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Never, the blood of Jesus cannot clean excuses and rationalization. Mm. I'll give you a new heart if you want it. A new spirit. And I'll remove from you the heart of stone. And give you, that's why we need in his presence. And I will put my spirit in you. Ah, and move you. That's why he's saying in Acts 1, 8, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses. I will move you first to follow my decrees and keep my laws. Then you will live in the land I gave your ancestors. You'll be my people and I'll be your God. Finally, I want to show you this shape. You know, all of us have been shaped by God. He's given us spiritual gifts. In Ephesians 4, he says, each of you, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is what it says. When he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. He will shape you in his presence by giving you spiritual gifts. You see the word there is shape, right? S-H-A-P-E. He will fire your heartfelt passions. Paul wrote to Timothy and said, fan into flame. <laughs> what are the passions God has given you? For some of you, it's for children. For some of you, it's for, it's for environment. For some of you, he, God will shape you in his presence. And he's, of course, giving you abilities or talents. They are all for his glory. They are all for his glory. Some of you are going to bring God glory through your athletics. Not through your preaching. Your athletics is what is going to spread his aroma among the nations. Who told you that all of us are supposed to be preaching? Yeah, 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 yeah. No. How many people in the Bible do you know were preachers? Abraham? David? Daniel? How, you tell me. What is this thing we have turned Christianity into? Go and shape the ministries. Go and shape the civil service. God will work through your temperament, your personality. He gave you that personality. Ah! Look at Elijah. Look at Moses. Very different temperaments. And yet both of them sending God's aroma to the nations. And you should try, not trying to be like somebody else. That's not your shape. That's not your shape. You try and ask uh, Moses to go and get the children. No, no, no. Let's switch it. Let's ask Elijah to go and get the children of Israel out of Egypt. You see, you are laughing. They have to take a Moses kind of temperament. The people will sin and be annoying. God, God himself said, I'm not going to go with the people. Moses said, God, Abba. Ah, God, can you say that? They're your people. Oh, they're not my people. How can you leave them here? Kill them in the desert. The Egyptians who here, they will say that, ah, this God, he took them out. He couldn't even take care of them. He has killed them in the desert. Oh, God. In fact, God, kill me instead. Hey, God, that's Moses. Elijah. <clears throat> he will say, who said we? Uh, who's, who's complaining? Fire! Uh, we need to bring this one hand. Listen, God has shaped, don't try to be like somebody else. He has shaped you uniquely. You see, even if some, the people have your same spiritual gifts, they have your same heart passions, they have your same talents, they have your same personality, they will have your same experiences. Hey, God takes everything about us. Romans 8, God works all things together for the good of those who love the Lord, who are called according to his purpose. 
He would take the good. He would take the bad. He would take the ugly. He would take all of it. In fact, some of you, if you did not have any mess, you wouldn't even have a message. Or some of you, the only reason you have a ministry is because you messed. <laughs> it's true, you know. God will take your education. He will take your skills. He will take everything about you so that he can use you to spread his aroma among the nations. Let's round up. Let me quickly show you how Jesus did this with his disciples. Look at this. He went up on a mountainside. He called to him those who he wanted. And they came to him. And then what did he do? He appointed 12. By the way, that's the same thing he says in John 15. You did not choose me. He says in verse, uh, John 15, 16. You did not choose me. I chose you. And I appointed you. All right. He says he appointed 12. And that, look, you see the purpose he chose them. He did not choose them so that they go and change the world. What did he choose them to do first? That they might be with him. Be with him. They might. Buzz are losing the transmission. When you lose the transmission in a car, the car is dead. The transmission is what takes the engine, connects the engine to the, to the wheels, so to speak, for the car to move. If you miss this being with Jesus, being with him, that transformation doesn't happen. The, tr the impacting of the world won't happen. That's what, that, that's what a complete disciple is. You see, you first need to be a friend of Jesus, loving him and being loved by him. Intimacy, intimacy. And as you do that, you become a follower of Jesus in terms of imitation. Imitate me as I imitate Christ. You begin to look like him. Your love, your joy, your peace, your patience, and kindness. And then you begin to fish for him. All right? So there's intimacy. There's imitation of Jesus. Be like him. And there's influencing the world for Jesus. Leading the world to Jesus. Many of us, we choose one or the other. We are not complete disciples. Some of us, we love. I love you, Lord. And I leave my voice. <laughs> You are intimate. Maybe you saw you, we think. But you have never brought anybody to Jesus. How can you be intimate with somebody and you don't tell anybody ever that you are in love? How? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, your discipleship is suspect. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the same way, some of you also, I love you, love, and I live. And there's that, they'll even add, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but your life is not like Jesus at all. It smells. It smells. If we get out right now and somebody stops on your toe, hey, I love you, Lord. Yeah. May Jesus make us complete. All right. So in the end, in the end, they became his friends. I no longer call you servants. John 15, that's the passage we read. Because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. They became intimate. But else, what else? Next slide. In the end, they became followers. They looked like him. Because in Acts chapter 4, when the Sanhedrin saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. They said, this guy doesn't have a PhD, but the way he talks, he must have been in his presence. Finally, of course, they became fishers. They turned the world upside down. These men who have turned the world upside down, Acts 17, 6, have come here also. I think that's the last verse. So, I love this statement by um, one of Billy Graham's brother-in-law. I met him a few times. And he started an organization that has this mantra. The aim is to be led more by Jesus. That's the intimacy. In his presence, that he would transform us, that we'll be able to test and approve what his will is, that he would transmit his power through us. To be led more by Jesus, then we can lead more like Jesus. Right? You see the friendship, you see the followership. And then we can do what? Lead more to Jesus. So in conclusion, my friends, this is a life that is spread the aroma of Christ. Abiding in Christ. We read from John 15. And being a disciple whose life is worth multiplying. That's the call. If your life is not worth, it's not showing forth God's glory. Please, leave us alone. Crazy prayer. Into his word. His word in you. Intimacy. Walking with the Holy Spirit. 
Then you can go about praying, not only with intimacy in Jesus, but praying for others. Praying for your community, that they'll come to know him. Blessing the nations. Hey, bless people, eh? I, know, I don't know, some people don't think Christians bless anybody. They think we are always cursing, always angry, always protesting, always bless people. And as you bless people, find those you can tell. God is knocking at this person's heart. Have a special relationship with them. Help them to discover Jesus through his word. You can see Ezekiel or those of who do Discovery Bible study. Help people discover Jesus through his word and then establish those people and then begin to multiply. That is the lifestyle of someone who is spreading the aroma. Don't forget God's intent is that the inner intimacy with him impacts us. It shapes us from our head to our hands to our hearts overflowing in an inward influence on the world for his glory. And that is what he says in Malachi. My name will be great among them. How many of us want God's name to be great among the nations? Oh, he deserves it. He deserves it. The lamb is worthy. He deserves it. But it starts from here. And it starts from inside. That the nations, whether east or west, will bring him glory. And in every place, incense, your incense will go. Pure offerings will be brought to me. Because my name will be great among the nations. Listen, it will happen. All nations, it will happen. With or without you. But I pray that it will be with you. Let's pray. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Maybe we can be on our feet and let's just, let's just lift our hands to God and say, God, take these hands. Take this body. I don't know what you've been using your body for, but he wants it. He says, give me your body. Then take this, take this mind. Lord, take this mind. Transform it. Transform it. Take this heart. Give me a new heart. Give me a new heart. We are in his presence. He is here so clearly, so powerfully. The Lord is here. Take me. Take me. And do a new thing in me. Let me smell good. Let me smell good. Let me be a sweet aroma in your nostrils. That this aroma then can go to the nations. Can go to the nations. The nations have come to Kenya. In one of your campuses here, there are 40 nations. Are they smelling the aroma of Jesus? Oh, are they smelling the aroma of Jesus? Transform me, Lord. Tell him, transform me, Lord. Transform me, Lord. Transform me, Lord. Shape me, Lord. Shape me, Lord. Shape me, Lord. Oh, some of us, God is going to cut some things away. He said in John 50, he will prune. Uh, some relationships, he's going to prune. It will be painful, but it will be worth it. Because then you'll begin to be fruitful. Fruit of your character, as well as fruit of impact. God, in your presence. There's no better place to be on a Sunday morning, on any morning for that matter, but in his presence. He's shaping people right now. I know somebody is getting a conviction right now. Leave that married man alone. God is telling you very clearly, leave that married man alone. I don't know who you are, you know, you know. Because if we are going to be people of impact in the world, it will come from being transformed by him. Hallelujah. Father, we, we are here in your presence. Our cry is, Lord, shape, shape me, shape us to be the aroma in your presence and to impact the whole world. We have been trying to please ourselves. We have been trying to be something else. But God, here we are confessing that we want to impact the world for your own glory. God, we thank you for ministering to us for showing us the way that we can be an aroma to the nations. There are so many nations that you have brought into Kenya. Mm. There are so many nations that have come to study in our universities. Yes, they have come to work with United Nations. They have come to work as ambassadors of their own nations. Yes, Lord. God, we are confessing that we have not been an aroma to them. But from today, we want to be an aroma 
of the Lord to these nations, of the Lord to wherever we are going, whether we are going as international students, whether we are going as professionals to go and work in other countries, to go and work among the people groups. Our, our desire is to be an aroma for the Lord, yes, Lord. to the nations. So receive all the glory and honor and praise, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Create in me a clean, clean heart and purify me. Purify me. Come on, lift up those hearts to the Lord. we thank you for the word that has come with such clarity as we bow down our heads and close our eyes in the presence of God you came to this service and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior or you are like what Isaiah describes that these people worship me with their lips but their hearts are far away from me but you want to start that intimate walk with the Lord. I want to pray for you this morning. Anyone in our midst, you are saying, Lord, I want to have a relationship with you. I want to surrender my life to you, Lord. Please shoot up your hand. I want to see it and pray with you. Those who are saying yes to the Lord. You are not born again. Thank you, my sister. I see that hand. Keep that hand up. Any other person, you are saying yes to Jesus this morning. I can see a hand right there. God bless you. Any other person, shoot up that hand. Put it up high so that I can be able to see it. You do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. I can see another hand right there. God bless you. Any other person? Can I ask those who have lifted up their hands, just take a step of faith and come right here with me. Just come. Just come. I see her. Thank you. Thank you, my sister. Go come. Come. Any other person? Your hand is up and you're saying, I want to give my life to the Lord. Just come. It is about you and the Lord Jesus. Thank you. God bless you. Stand here, young lady. Just stand here. God bless you. God bless you. Face, me. face this direction. Just face me. Thank you. Thank you. Any other person? Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. This is the beginning point. Oh, imagine how the Lord loves you. Mm. Thank you, thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Any other person? Thank you, young man. I see you coming. You don't have to be left behind there. It's an opportunity for you to start off with the Lord. This is a new beginning. It's a new beginning. God bless you, young man. Any other person? Remember, this is about your life. God is intending to use you so that you can be an aroma of his presence. Thank you, young lady. God bless you. 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 Any other person saying yes to the Lord? Before we pray for these dear ones, remember the Lord is interested in using you. But that the Lord using you must begin from the place of intimacy. Father, we give you praise. Can I ask that you lift up your hands? Just lift up your hands. Just lift up your hands. Father, we give you praise and we give you honor. Thank you, Lord, for this morning. And thank you, Lord, for these ones that you have grown to yourself. Because the Bible says nobody can come to the Father, to the Son, unless the Father draws them to the Son. And we are grateful that you have provided, us, uh, provided a leeway where we can come to the Father. And the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and life. Oh God, this morning, there is an aroma that is changing from these dear ones. And this aroma, oh Christ, is the one that comes from you. And I thank you for this brethren who have come forward and say, I just want to surrender my life to the Lord. 
May you receive them in your kingdom, O oh God. Blessed be your holy name. I want you to repeat after me. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, this morning, I surrender my life to you. I confess you as the Lord and the Savior of my life. From today, going forward, let me be an aroma of Christ. Father, we give you praise for these dear ones. Receive them into your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Come on, church. Appreciate the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. My goodness. My goodness. Behind you, you will see Pastor Elisha. Where do you want them to go? This way. So please stand at that end. Follow this gentleman. He's going to lead you. Come on, church. Just, just appreciate them. Amen. 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 Can we take our seats for a moment? These are the days I wish our service was four hours. For Dr. Pabi, thank you for allowing the Lord to use you. Would you want to appreciate the man of God? Amen. Amen. We want to receive our first time visitors. And I want to ask the church leaders to come forward. All our first time visitors, we want to thank God that you chose today to come and fellowship with us at Sitam Fika Road. We don't take you for granted and we bless the Lord for each one of you. Can I ask kindly, our first time visitors, would you want to stand up again, please? Where are our first time visitors? Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Come on, church. Let's appreciate them. This, this is what I want you to do because we have prepared a cup of chai for you and we want to extend Sitam Thika Road hospitality to you. I want you to pick everything you came with, your Bible, notebook, everything. And I want you to come forward. This is part of our church leadership. So you are going to start from that end. You shake their hands and then you are going to be led by our welcome team to the visitor's launch. Come on, I want you to appreciate them as they come forward. Just come from wherever you are, just come. Just come, come forward, come forward. You start from this end. You are going to start from this side. You just shake their hands as you walk around here. Come on church, let's encourage them. Amen, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. We appreciate each one of you. And we love you for coming to fellowship with us today. Oh, and wherever you go, may the aroma of Christ be felt from you. May you spread the aroma of his goodness. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, we are so blessed today. We have so many visitors. Oh, we bless you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Yes, walk with our welcome team. Thank you, 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 thank you so much. We appreciate each one of you and we thank the Lord for you. Amen, 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 and amen, and amen, and amen, and amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We bless the Lord for each one of you. Thank you for coming to the place of prayer. We bless the Lord for you. Amen. And amen, and amen, and amen. Amen, amen, amen. And before I ask that we stand up, I want to request my dear wife to walk with uh, our brethren here so that they can prepare for uh, the next service. Amen, amen, amen. Just walk with them. Thank you, Pastor. Just walk with them. Just walk with them. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. Let's appreciate our minister. Amen. You can tell I was at home because I like the energy. Hallelujah. Can I ask that we all stand? Let's all stand in the presence of God. Let's all stand in the presence of God. Now, there is something that the preacher said and, and 
This was the theme of his message throughout. We can never be an aroma if we are not intimate. Did you hear that? We can never be an aroma. We can never give out the aroma if we are not intimate. Now, to be intimate is going to cost you. It's going to cost you. And the first characteristic of intimacy is time. It's time. So do you spend time with your lover? That's a rhetoric question that I'm posing to us. Do you spend time with your lover? And in this case, it's Jesus. Father, I pray. That our intimacy is not going to be lip service, but it will be heart service. In your word, Second Corinthians chapter two and verse fourteen, your word says that but thanks be to God who leads us as Christ captives and in a procession so that we can be able to give out the aroma of Christ everywhere we go. Father, I pray that everywhere we go, may the aroma of your presence be felt by everybody. And I pray for my brothers and sisters the Lord in this church will be defined by one thing. Lovers of God. That at the place of prayer will be running there. In our closets we will spend time there. Oh God. We cannot spread your aroma in the nations unless we ourselves have been transformed. We ourselves have been deeply connected with you. As we go into the week, may you go with us and may your hand of mercy guide us in everything that we do. People of God, may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and may the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. And may the Lord give you peace. You are blessed and highly favored of the Lord. And I pray that as you go into the week, the way God releases his blessings over those who love him, may you be a partaker of those blessings in Jesus' name. And now may the grace and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. We meet here on Wednesday from 6 to 7.30. A time of connecting with our Lord. God bless you. See you on Wednesday.